Welcome to the Certified Badass Online Marketing Podcast, where being a badass has less to do with what you wear and what music you listen to and everything to do with whether you've got the thriving online business of your dreams. I'm your renegade thinking Harvard Law grad turned online entrepreneur host, Bobby Clay. In my years building my thriving business, the most important lesson I've learned is that being a badass online marketer isn't about secret strategies or ninja tactics. It's about doing the basic stuff right and showing the F up. So each week here on the show, you'll get clear, easy to execute guidance on how to build your online business and a swift kick in the ass or two to make sure you're getting it done. Welcome to this live Friday episode of the Certified Badass Online Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Klink, and I'm excited for today's show because I'm going to be giving you a swift kick in the ass that you probably need. Specifically, this week, we're going to be talking about the importance of detaching from the results. In other words, we're going to be talking about why you need to let go and not feel deflated, not feel like a failure, not feel like everything has gone wrong if things don't quite go the way you plan. When you have the power of detachment, things get so beautiful for you and it makes everything so much easier. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Before I dive in, though, this power of detachment is something that I really kind of learned in a real way from my coach, James Wedmore. It was something that, that took some time to get before I was there, before I kind of, you know, was working in his world and had him as a coach. Candidly, this is something I wasn't great at. And so I thank him for that. And He's not just good at detachment. He's good at a lot of different things. And so if you haven't yet, you can actually grab access to this program he has called Your First 100 Leads, which I think is kind of not named very well because, yes, it'll help you get your first 100 leads if that's where you are in your business. But it's so much more than that. It will help you no matter where you are in your business to align your freebie, your message, your marketing and then your offer and get it all aligned so it's kind of a natural flow for people. So uh, you can grab that. You can get access to that by heading over to bobbyclink.com forward slash 100 leads. It's it's the number 100, so 100 leads. So again, bobbyclink.com forward slash 100 leads. Now, with that, I want to dive into this episode of what I want to talk about, about the power of detachment. But before I talk about it, I want to actually talk about kind of the inspiration for it, because I want you to understand that, you know, this isn't something that I have mastered, because candidly, I don't think you ever really master detachment. And the idea for this episode came about, um, I don't know, it was a couple of weeks ago, uh, Katie Chase and I, so Katie is my integrator, we were, were, were participating in an affiliate launch of James's program, which is coming up in June, his, his business by design program. And we were doing some things. We were in the process of getting some leads in and doing some of this work. And we were ecstatic about what was happening. We were loving everything that was happening. We were you know, feeling energy. We were feeling excitement. All of that was happening. And, you know, like literally we were having this conversation about how excited we were, about how everything was going great. And then all of a sudden a leaderboard was posted. So if you've never been an affiliate, what will happen is when you are an affiliate, the person whose products you're promoting will post a leaderboard of like kind of how people are stacking up. And we like had actually moved down a spot and, and candidly, we were kind of expecting that we were going to move up a spot. And so for a moment, all of a sudden, the sheer joy that we were feeling before this excitement, all of that, all of a sudden we, we both kind of had this sense of, huh? And we felt a bit of dejection, like we had failed of something was going wrong. And, you know, luckily that only lasted for me about five minutes and I was able to, you know, give myself that swift kick in the ass and say, wait a minute, 
Who cares? Who gives an F where you are on the leaderboard? Think about what's actually happening. And so, you know, that was a, a small moment. And that's an example of where we had become attached to a particular result. We had become attached to the idea of moving up the leaderboard. And that attachment wasn't doing us any good because if we had lived in that spot of feeling let down, dejected, et cetera, it could have stopped us from, from making progress. And luckily, like I said, I shifted myself and then, you know, I, I chatted with Kate, Katie and, you know, we were both like, what are we talking about? We're happy. Let's be happy about this and let's keep going. And so that's what brought this episode to my mind of why I wanted to do it. But there's also this kind of expression in the online marketing world um, that, that I hear, and I don't know if everybody talks about it, but people will talk about launch freefall. This is when you're in the middle of a launch, whether it's a webinar launch, a video series launch, a challenge launch, even just an email only launch, but you're in the middle of a promotion and things aren't going your way. You're not getting the results you see. And often what people will do is they start to spiral. They spiral kind of out of control in this you know, dejection. It's not working. Everything sucks. I'm a failure. Nobody wants this product. And it puts them in a funk. And the reality is that if you are an entrepreneur, if you're launching, if you're putting things out there, what I'm going to tell you is you're going to have things happen where you don't get the result you want. And so I want to talk to you about why you need to detach from that, not have this level of attachment to the results, but take action anyway. And I want to start by talking about a couple of the most important reasons to detach, and then I'm going to give you some tips on how to do it. Now, the reasons to detach from results, to not have a sense of attachment to the actual results of anything happening, and especially especially like results of a launch and goals and things like that. The big reasons, there's two reasons I want to talk about, and both of them relate to the fact that that attachment is hurting your business. Depending on where you are, it could be that that attachment to results is actually stopping you from taking action in the first place because you are afraid that you might fail. And the fear of failure, the fear that people will say no, the fear that you're going to put something out there and no one buys terrifies you. And I get it. I understand why that's terrifying. And as a result, you end up not putting your offer out there, not creating that course, not creating that membership, not doing whatever it is that you want to do. And now maybe it's very specific and you recognize that, but most people don't recognize that this is what's happening. For most people, what you're doing is instead of putting the offer out there, instead of asking people for money, you say, well, I got to make my website prettier right now first before I can do that. Oh, no, I've got to get, get those testimonials from 857 people before I could ever create a course. Oh, no, no, no. I, I've got to make my, my freebie better, even though it's bringing in leads. No, it's not right. I got to make it better. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I've got to work on this, that, or the other. Oh, I've got to take a class to learn how to do this. And we see it over and over and over and over again. And what happens is that the reality is that when you dig deep into that, all of those things I talked about are rooted in fear. You feel like you need testimonials because you're afraid that if you don't have testimonials, people won't buy. You feel like you have to make your website pretty because you're afraid that if it's not, people won't buy. And at the end of the day, the problem is that what you're doing is stunting your entrepreneurial growth and stunting any chance of success. Because think about it for a second. To avoid the potential that you put something out there and no one buys, you're putting yourself in a position where there's a guarantee a 100% guarantee that no one's going to buy. So not taking action has the exact negative impact that you are afraid might happen if you do take action. 
And that's the contradiction here. That's the paradox. That's one of the things you look at and you say, wait a minute, to avoid potentially having no one buy, I'm going to make sure no one buys. And I want you to see that if you can get over that attachment and that fear, you can actually take action. You can actually get out there. You can actually do these things that will actually move your business forward. So that's the first reason we've got to get rid of it is to get over that fear that is stopping you from putting your offer out there in the first place. But the second reason why you really need to learn to detach is because I'm just going to be honest with you. If you go into launch free fall in the middle of a launch, it's going to hurt you. Now, if you're in a mastermind group, if you're in a, like a small group of group coaching or something like that, hopefully you can go to those people and you can, you know, they can walk, talk you off the ledge. But the problem is so many entrepreneurs end up in this bad spiral in the middle of a launch because things aren't going well. And so they get into a funk, they get a low energy, they start thinking emotionally instead of rationally. And none of that is good. Because first of all, look, your emotions matter. In a launch, what I can tell you is any time that I went into a launch in a bit with like a kind of an, um, a desperate place, it didn't work well. Now, if I go into a launch in a completely aligned, completely content, completely happy place, those launches and email launches and everything I've done, those are the ones that we hit out of the park. And some people might say, well, you're aligned because you're going to hit it out of the park. No, I hit it out of the park because I bring that emotional state to the launch because we've all seen it. We can sense desperation, neediness, etc. And if that's the energy you're putting out there, you're not going to have a successful launch. So getting into this free fall just puts out the wrong energy, but also you will start making the wrong decisions. You might start doing things, adding things, not doing things on an emotional basis, not based on looking at the numbers, not based upon actually looking and saying, what should I be doing? What are the results I'm seeing? What are they telling me? So you've got to detach from the results to be able to get out of that emotional state to pivot right. Now, I'm not saying that in a launch that if it's not going well, you keep doing exactly what you were going to be doing. No, oftentimes you're going to have to make decisions, say, hey, boom, I need to pivot. But you need to have the place in your mind to make those decisions rationally, not based on an emotional reaction, not based upon being in this state of fear or dread. And so you need to be able to keep your wits, wits about you in the middle of your promotions, of your launches. And having this attachment to results prevents you from doing that because it leads to emotions, it leads to thoughts, it leads to beliefs, and that screws everything up. So I hope I've convinced you that you need to detach. And hopefully at this point you're saying, well, great, Bobby, I'd love to detach, but uh, I don't think that's something I can do. And I've got some, some ideas that I hope will help you. And I'm going to start with a couple of, of things that are about timing. Because I think this is the biggest problem. And this is the thing that leads to the biggest attachment to results. Too many people wait until their back is against the wall and they need their launch, their promotion, their sale, whatever it is, to perform. In other words, they're not going to be able to make payroll. If they don't have a successful launch, they're not going to be able to, you know, not, not keep the lights on, but you get the point. They're going to have no choice but to go back and, you know, give up the business and get a J-O-B. When you put yourself in that spot, when you wait that long to start making offers, trying and getting people into your world, guess what? It's going to be hard to detach from the results. Like if my livelihood, my, my, my well-being depended on the success of a launch and me hitting a goal that I set for a launch, yeah, I'm going to be attached. And I don't care how zen you are. I don't care anything. It's going to be hard to detach. So the first thing you need to do to actually detach from the results and not have this unhealthy attachment is 
actually start putting offers out sooner and not backing yourself into a corner where a launch has to succeed or else. Because when it has to succeed or else, you are going to feel, you know, uh, nervous. You are going to feel needy. You are going to feel desperate. And all of that is going to affect you. It's going to affect the energy in the launch. It's going to affect what other people are interpreting from you. So don't wait. Get the offers out there. Start selling earlier. Start whatever it is that, that, that you have attachment to results. Start it sooner so that you don't have that desperation. So that's the first thing. Don't do that. Don't wait. The second piece, though, is where I see people really struggle with this is that they've kind of gone all in. And in other words, like, let's say they're, they're doing a launch for the first time and they put a ton of money into Facebook ads, into this, into that, et cetera, without even knowing what's going to happen. And it could be that they have an offer that, that has been proven, but they, they like quadruple their ad spend and, and it puts pressure on themselves. Well, guess what? When you go all in, you're doing the same thing as backing yourself into the corner by waiting. You're putting it in this position where if the launch does not succeed, you're going to have some bad consequences. Because like, you know, if you spent a ton of money on Facebook ads and, and it doesn't perform, all of a sudden you're like, Ugh. so you need to not do that. And again, definitely don't get to the point that you are, you know, going all in on a launch until it's been tested, until it's been proven, until you feel confident you've done this, you've rinsed, you've repeated. And then at that point, you're like, I'm ready to scale. But even then, what I would tell you is to really have success you can't be in a spot where you're basically saying, well, I'm going to, you know, roll the dice where if I don't hit my goals, I'm going bankrupt in my business because of all the money I'm going to spend in advance. If you do that, you're going to put yourself at too much of a risk and it's going to be very hard to avoid being attached to the results and going into launch freefall if things don't work. The entrepreneurs who really build businesses that we all look at and say, I want that business. Maybe they have big launches. Maybe they have those things from time to time, but they're also building constantly. It's the small wins here, there, and yonder that make things work. Like, you know, my business, for example, right now, like we have money come in every single day based upon people randomly going to my website and, and I don't say randomly, but going to my website and buying legal templates. So we have this fuel that's constantly there and is constantly helping us sustain the business so that the launches are kind of an additional thing. And you've probably noticed, you know, other than the very first launch I did back in 2017, that was a complete flop where I learned this lesson. I don't do crazy things like throw a ton of money into Facebook ads before I have a proven funnel and a proven launch. I start small, I scale. If it works, I do more of that. And I do less of the stuff that didn't work. So don't, don't go all in until, I mean, I, I don't think you should ever go all in, but just be careful about how you're spending until you've proven out your offer. So kind of those first two things that we talked about, don't back yourself into a corner by waiting and don't go all in are things not to do. But now I want to talk about two things that I want you to do. First of all, I want you to recognize that you can pivot. Much of the attachment comes from this belief that, for example, people who plan out their entire year, which, yes, I do, you know, we'll plan out a year. We have these ideas, but it's people who then believe they cannot change that plan. And so, for example, let's say you had a calendar, your, your, your revenue is going to come in on two launches, and that is your plan for the year in March and in November. And I, I'm just randomly picking those dates. And then the March launch doesn't, isn't going well. Well, if you're from this mindset, if you're from this perspective where you're saying, well, I can't launch again. I'm not launching again until November. There's nothing. I, I'm not going to have any more money until November. Holy crap. What am I going to do? Well, I can understand why that's scary. But what I want you to understand is that you can always pivot. Even if you planned only to launch in March and November, guess what? You could fix things and do another launch in July, in August, whenever. 
or you could come up with some other smaller offer and maybe try something else out. You can always make changes. You can always pivot. You have that freedom and recognize that. And if you recognize that, then I want you to step back and when things aren't working the way you wanted in a launch or in anything else you're doing, what you need to be doing is saying, okay, what is this telling me? What is the lesson I need to learn from things not working right now? Is it that maybe I need to tweak my offer? Is it maybe that I, I okay, good, got it. I'm going to go this way. You have to be open to the possibility of a pivot of a change of doing something different to be able to learn those lessons. One of my favorite sayings, I've heard it from, from James, I don't know who originally said it, but the notion is very simply this. There is no failure in a launch. You either succeed or you learn a lesson. And if you have that mindset and bring that mindset to your promotions, to things you're doing, you will be so much better off. Because then when things aren't going right, you're not saying, Oh my God, I'm a failure. Nothing's working. You're saying, okay, what is the lesson that I need to be learning right now? What is it that I need to be figuring out? What is it I need to be changing? What are the different things I need to do to make this what I want it to be? But you only get that when you are willing to accept and come from this perspective that you are free to make changes. You are free to pivot. You have that and we are all doing it. So that's the first thing you have to do. And now this next one is a suggestion that may sound weird to you, but I want you to try it on for size. You should pick goals that you have no possible way of reaching. That's right. You should pick goals in launches, in your years, in, in everything that there's no freaking way you're ever going to achieve. Now I say that because number one, if you fail on meeting your goals every single time, you're not going to feel attachment to the results. You're not going to be like, Oh man, I'm a failure because I make it You're like, no, Hey, cool. You know, I didn't hit the number, but everything worked. And again, I have had to try to instill this in my team. I don't think I have hit a goal I've had for a launch. Like that was actually my goal. I don't say ever, but probably not since the very first time that I launched successfully back in May of 2018. Since then, I have not yet met a goal in my launches. And now some people talk about doing, you know, good, better and best. I say, screw that. I set one goal and it is a big, hairy, scary goal for everything I do. And I do that because not only does it help avoid a, your attachment to results, but just as importantly, the goals we set for ourselves are what then kind of decide the actions that we take. If we set goals that are safe, guess what? We don't get out of our comfort zone. We don't take the actions that we need to take to grow, to become the person who can hit the bigger goal. So, what I'm going to suggest to you, what I want you to try on for size is that you should constantly be setting goals that are crazy, big, hairy, scary goals and trying to grow, trying to become the person you need to be to reach that goal, to take the actions outside your comfort zone to actually say, well, I can't keep doing what I've been doing and hit this goal. What got me here won't get me there. That is one of the things I've learned from James, my, my coach in spades. And it's one of the most valuable lessons that we all need. Look, if you're not yet a six figure entrepreneur and you want to be a six figure entrepreneur, you can't keep doing what you've been doing to this point. You have to grow and become a six figure entrepreneur before you make six figures. It's only by becoming that person that you will then take the actions that you need to hit that number. The same thing for me. I right now 
am working to become the seven figure entrepreneur. The entrepreneur who thinks, acts, everything I do, do is what a seven figure entrepreneur would do. Because I know I have to be that person before I will get that result. And what I'll tell you is that it all starts with the goals we set. And I'm talking about launch goals. I'm talking about if you're thinking about what is my goal to grow my Instagram, to grow my Facebook, to grow things like that, any of those things. Like for example, and, and we literally just went through this and, and I will give you kind of a, a behind the scenes. My, my, on my team, everyone has one or more numbers, things that they are responsible for. And most of them, we want them obviously to grow. And so Katie, my integrator, she's also the head of my growth team. So she is responsible for the leads in our system, both kind of the people who are getting the weekly emails, but also the people in my nurture sequences and welcome sequences. And we, I don't remember where we finished Q1, but she initially set a goal for where she wanted that number to be at the end of Q2. And guess what? We're already past that. And so the lesson that I'm going to take from that, that I'm going to push her on next time when we're doing our planning at the end of Q2 for Q3 is I want you to set a much higher goal because I don't want you approaching this from the perspective of we could just keep doing what we're doing and get there. No, I want a goal that we got to do something crazy and maybe not crazy, but we have to actually change, get better, improve tweak, whatever it is. And I'm not talking about make minor improvements. I'm talking about quantum leaps in what we're doing. Because that's how you get the exponential growth. That's how things start to truly change. So my my kind of four things that I'm saying you need to do and not do to get this level of detachment Number one, don't wait until you're backed in a corner where you've got to succeed because then you're in a place of desperation and then you're going to be attached to the results and chances are it's not going to end well for you. Second, don't go all in. Don't mortgage the, the success of your company, even if like you, you had things by making a huge bet when, you know, doing so puts you in that same place. Recognize that you can pivot. And that when things don't go your way, it's just a lesson that you need to learn and then be inquisitive and say, what is the lesson that I need to learn? And then make the changes based on that. And then I want you, and, and this really is the big one for me here. I want you to set goals that you know you are going to fail at reaching. I fail 95% of the time. And I hope that that gives you permission, not that you need my permission. But I want you to understand, I try things all the frickin' time. And you don't see, you don't remember. Maybe you, if you're a listener or you, you follow me on social, you've seen me try these things, but you don't remember the things that flopped. I remember them way more than you do. You remember the things that worked. Because those are the things I keep doing. Those are the things that are memorable. And the big powerful lesson that you need to learn is to truly be successful, it's not because you succeed all the time. It's because you take more shots. It's because you keep getting up when things don't work. You don't view it as, I'm a failure, I can't do this. You say, hey, okay, that didn't work. What am I going to do now? And the only way you do that is getting comfortable with the notion that you will fail. And you will fail repeatedly, but it's not a failure. Failing at one thing does not make you a failure. It means one thing didn't work out. And if you go in expecting to fail, guess what? Then you don't take failure as a statement about you. So my, my call to action is to set crazy, audacious goals, expect to fail, and then be like, oh, okay, cool. I failed. What am I going to learn? And then move on. If you will take that approach to entrepreneurship, what I will tell you is business will get way more fun, but you'll also get way better results. That's it for this episode. I will see you again next Tuesday. 
for part two of my interview with my coach, James Wedmore, uh, that I lovingly call these episodes, Keep It Simple Stupid with James Wedmore, uh, because he and I have that, that thing, that same view about the way um, to build a successful business. So I hope you'll catch that. And if you didn't catch the Tuesday episode that I, I just came out, go check it out. Um, it was my first part of my interview with James. He was dropping all kinds of knowledge. It was a ton of fun. Go check it out. And I'll see you again next week. That's it for this episode of the Certified Badass Online Marketing Podcast. Make sure to tune in next time. And in the meantime, go out and build the badass business of your dreams. Oh,